We're going to cover the fundamentals that underlie our ability to engineer resilience, the field of resilience engineering. So our, we're going to run through some very initial ideas that are going to echo throughout all the material we're going to cover. And the first is where whatever kind of system, whatever kind of role, whatever kind of stakes you have in the systems and organizations that you're active in, there's a universal goal. Viability. Viability is the goal that sort of overarching, encompassing kind of target for our behavior, how we do things and how we adapt. Now, we're talking we in the sense of people and what roles people are in and different kinds of organizations and systems, technologies we develop, deploy, providing valued services. But this really applies across the biological realm. We could be talking about adaptation in cells, or even subcellular organisms like viruses. We could be talking about it in terms of organ systems like the cardiovascular system. We could be talking about it in terms of the uh, neurophysiology and how the brain works. We could be talking about it in terms of bone. All of these are kinds of biological references that we may make at various points as we explore the fundamentals and therefore set up a stage for us to talk about the pragmatics, what you can do to engineer resilience into complex systems. But across the biological realm, including people, that we are part of this biological realm. We're in this universe. We are players in this universe. Viability is a universal goal. To achieve that goal, we have to adapt. The systems are always adapting in one way, in one form or another, so that to study resilience and engineering resilience is to study how we adapt, when we adapt the different forms of adaptation. We're going to try to understand adaptive capacity. Now there's two basic forms of adaptation we're going to center on to organize our exploration. One is handling challenge, that whatever the activity however it's configured to provide value, right, challenges will arise. And so we will cover what's called extensibility, given the potential for brittle collapse, that there are boundaries to what we can do, that our range of adaptive behavior has limits. We can have different ranges of adaptive behavior. But given that there are limits, Right? And challenges will occur at those boundaries. We have to have some ability to extend or stretch our performance at the boundaries. That form of extensibility will be central in what we explore. There's another basic form of adaptation going on, and that is how we seek opportunity. How do we grow? How do we create new capabilities? How do we provide new kinds of services? How do we provide new kinds of value? But seeking opportunity to produce growth happens in the face of constraints. We don't have a free wide space with, with, within which to develop new things, but we have to work around a variety of constraints. Where do those constraints come from? Well, the two basic ones that govern this universe, that govern the space in which human systems operate, are first that resources are finite. Resources are always finite. Now, we may try to relax that under some conditions over a certain range and say, well, we don't have to worry about it for the moment, but that's an illusion. We always have to worry about finite resources because they have an impact, we'll see, that permeates the ways that adaptive systems behave, the regularities, the laws, the patterns, and the fundamental theorems, the basics that always apply. And the second factor that drives those basics is that change is continuous. Change doesn't stop. Time continues on. We have to remember that change, the dynamics are always going on. 
It's not a series of snapshots. We're not freezing things. We're not at a stable equilibrium point, not really changing. No, change is ongoing. Those are the two big things. Now, what happens because of the, each of those, the finite resources mean we end up with having conflicts. The potential for conflict, the reality of conflicts and what we're trying to accomplish is ubiquitous. It is everywhere. Change, being continuous, creates another issue for us. Whatever our model by which we operate, by which we develop, by which we insert and deploy new forms of technology, our model of how the world works and how to work that world to provide value, those models become stale. Right? Change goes on, resources are finite, so our models will be incomplete they may be better than before, but they will become stale as change continues. Surprise will recur. Surprise reoccurs over and over, even as we grow and create new forms of value or extend the range of value that we can provide to stakeholders. Surprise recurs. Now, there's one other thing that drives the adaptive universe. Resources are finite, change is continuous, and the third one is there are other players, there are other roles, there are other units at different layers as we think about the systems we are engaged in, a part of, and actors in. So we can think about those layers and the units or roles in those layers and how they're adapting to. They are both seeking opportunity and they are trying to develop mechanisms that allow them to handle challenge. Now, we can illustrate these kinds of uh, fundamentals, these constraints that we're laying out, because we see them in operation when we study actual systems trying to carry out difficult tasks uh, in, uh, uh, in changing worlds under pressure, pressure to do more, and under experience of challenges which threaten collapse, accidents, or near misses. And as we study these systems and how they sometimes fail, uh, but often succeed despite the risks, and how they grow and change, right, we see some regularities. We see laws. So from seeking opportunity, given other units are adapting to, we see the law of stretch systems. This emerged around 1998, right? so part of the origin of resilience engineering about 20 to 25 years ago. The law of stretch system is that any improvement will be exploited by other stakeholders, resulting in the activity having to go on at a new intensity and a new tempo of activity. So the work never gets easier, but rather advances, transform the way work is done, and it gets pushed back to the edge of the envelope in order to maximize productivity, at least for other roles. Maximize advantage, not simply for the role, the primary role in, in question, but for the other interdependent roles that can get advantage from that improvement or new capability. If we think about it relative to handling challenge, one of the basic laws is the law of fluency. Explicitly, this is about 20 years old, but it really goes back decades before in understanding human performance and human uh, adaptation. The law of flu fluency states that well-adapted activity hides the difficulties handled and the dilemmas resolved. So that by being well-adapted, well-adaptive, Right? It hides what's difficult. It hides the challenge. So the law of stretch systems, the law of fluency, indicates that we have regularities, empirical regularities that we've seen, generalized, and applied to many, many different sectors, many kinds of systems, many kinds of points of change as we introduce and deploy new forms of technology. 